Admitting Mary Poppins is your favorite movie comes with a variety of responses. Yay! Hi, I'm Nick Tierce, and I'd like to illustrate why Mary Poppins is the best movie of all time. I'm hardly the first to sing the praises of Mary Poppins, and while many have spoken to the award-winning excellence of its performances, the infectiousness of its tunes, and the sheer joy of its tone, I believe that the ultimate brilliance of Mary Poppins lies in the conciseness of its narrative. There is hardly a wasted moment. Each sequence and every song reveals character, furthers the story, and establishes theme, building on each other towards a climactic moment of thematic unity, a profoundly human statement. And just what is that statement? So glad you asked. As is popularly pointed out, the movie is not, as it appears at first glance, about a magical nanny who floats in and teaches lessons to two precocious children. It has been widely suggested that Mr. Banks is, in fact, the main character of the piece. And while his character's arc most closely resembles the traditional hero's journey, that assignation doesn't quite reflect the total structure of the film itself, does it? More accurately, Mary Poppins, like many prominent classic myths, and certain modern stories, features a central character entirely unchanging. Mary Poppins herself is a moral exemplar. The drama of her story is that of the change she inspires around her. Therefore, the central dramatic arc of Mary Poppins, the film, is one shared by the entire Banks family as a unit. They enter the movie broken, and through individual changes of perception, contribute to a shared arc that ends with them soaring as high as their metaphorical kite. Like many Disney films and the ancient fables that precede them, a theme of preserving the childhood sense of wonder is present. It's not so much that the children create the appearance of the already extant nanny, but rather, as a being of the transcendent, she speaks to virtues present in the children at risk of being destroyed by the volatile state of the family. Beyond the requisite magic brought by Mary Poppins, it is made immediately clear that the everyday world is one of confounding whimsy. Even at a state of rest, the dysfunction of the family is reflected in the world they inhabit, from Admiral Boom's absurd timeliness to the pompous march of the bank partners. Mr. Banks lives in a state of obliviousness, a blind acceptance of the zane of his location reflecting the backwards ethics of the profession he finds himself steeped in against which Mary Poppins defines herself through displays of social norm-disrupting magic. An extension of that magic is Bert, a lower-class, multivocational antithesis to the staunch, single-minded Mr. Banks. He walks among us in the universe of the story, entertaining the common citizens of Cherry Tree Lane with comic poems. He is the audience's introduction to the world of the story, speaking directly through the proscenium. At film's end, it is Bert that must lend a common context to Mr. Banks after the cacophonous displays of magic paraded around him. Mr. Banks' obliviousness is matched by Mrs. Banks' hypocrisy. She participates in the suffragette movement for women's rights at the expense of time with her family, which, when given, is spent bending to her husband's every whim. Her conflicted efforts cancel themselves out, leaving her in a similarly immobile position as the family itself. But to remedy this stalemate, all that's needed is a change in the wind. And it's not for random chance that the wind's in the east. The sicknesses that ail the Banks family are of the Western variety, and though steeped in Western mythology, Mary Poppins' lessons are also informed by Eastern ideologies. From her ascended perch on a cloud, parrot-handled umbrella, duet with a bird, and chat with a dog, Mary Poppins is introduced as a being one with nature. This harmonious approach is at the center of her being, extending to the lessons of human nature she displays. An agent of the miraculous wonders that surround the children everywhere, she preaches a balanced approach, a healthy dose of magic, just a spoonful of sugar. Each display of magic in the hands of mere mortals finds itself engorged to the point of ruin. Once clean, the nursery turns into a circus of explosive energy. The charming jaunt of Chim Chimney makes way for the excessively bombastic step in time. Uncle Albert is stuck to the ceiling with addictive laughter. Mary must temper these gluttonous displays with a sensible attitude. She not only gifts the sight to perceive these wonders through simple acts of innocent kindness, but also the foresight to warn off the overindulgence which has led to the family's decay in other areas. Mary Poppins is the harmonious balance to the total imbalance of the Banks family. With that in mind, just what is the message? What are the escalating beats of this narrative? Distilled, what are the raw elements born of every sequence and song that cascade into a climactic message? 
So glad you asked. After the chaotic disorder of the family and their environment, the symbolic imagery of the broken kite is established immediately with the introduction of the children. Mary Poppins' arrival introduces the central harmonious concept of a spoonful of sugar. What form does that spoonful of sugar take? A magic trip and conceptual evolution into supercalifragilistic expialidocious, a word to say when you've nothing else to say, and an elevating lesson in the importance of laughter. After the excitement of the day, a foreshadowing lullaby inspires the children to feed the birds only tuppence a bag. A small act of innocent, selfless kindness, the central philosophy of Mary Poppins, and an aberrant sin to Mr. Banks. When the children join their father at his place of business, the refusal to invest their tuppence for want of feeding the birds inspires a soul-shattering run on the bank. Dismissed from his position, Mr. Banks' life is left in ruin lifted only by the selfless act of his children electing to give him their tuppence. While this innocent act cannot solve the external crisis, it is all that is needed to remedy his internal one. He is transformed, and all the seemingly disparate symbolic images converge into a single, inevitable moment of release. The tuppence, the word, the elevating laughter, the soaring kite. His inverted values have been righted, a change fully demonstrated through his transfer of joyous laughter to the senior Mr. Dawes. At home, the symbolic gestures of sacrifice are made. Mr. Banks has abandoned his banker's grip on tuppence to literally purchase paper and string. Mrs. Banks volunteers her cause's sash for a tail, and together, hand in hand with the children, they have mended the kite as they themselves have been mended as a family. The soaring of their kite in the finale is a symbolic representation of their spiritual ascent. And with that, harmony returns. Balance has been restored. The wind has changed, and Mary Poppins' duty is done. I could speak for days and fill tomes with nuanced observations of every inch of this film, but I hope this brief look has given you a new lens through which to appreciate this truly timeless classic. Because as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to movies, it's true that Mavis and Sybil have ways that are winning, and Prudence and Gwendolyn set your heart spinning. Phoebe's delightful, Maud is disarming, Janice, Felicia, Lydia, Charming, Cynthia's dashing, Vivian sweet, Stephanie smashing, Priscilla a treat, Veronica, Millicent, Agnes, and Jerry. Convivial company time and again, Drunkus and Phyllis and Glynis are sorts, I'll agree a three jolly good sports, but cream of the crop, tip of the top is Mary Poppins and there we stop. One last thing, and do forgive me for taking the opportunity to say this, but if anyone from Disney Studios happened to be watching, my extensive study of this film has inspired a concept for what I believe would be an excellent sequel worthy of the first. So if you feel the need to feed the birds in your own way, I am available for general meetings. <laughs>